Welcome to Australian Survivor Archives, the only podcast going over the complete history of Australian Survivor from Whaler's Way right through to the current day. We are so excited for today's episode another interview it's a first here on australian survivor archives for the type of interview that we've got going and we have got so much to cover so many questions to ask so much information to get that we're gonna basically get right into it my name is ben and i'm gonna throw to the second greatest iron man on this episode today to tell us a little bit more about what we're talking about today thanks ben hi all uh it's matt dyson here as always and ben this is a really uh, fantastic interview we got going because we are finally getting to interview a winner of this great game. Unfortunately, <laughs> as everyone knows, we weren't able to interview the winner of last season, Rob Dixon, because unfortunately he has passed away, but we've got a winner of Celebrity Survivor here. But before I get into who it is, obviously you already know, but he really needs no introduction. I'm, if anyone turned on the TV in the 90s, they would have seen this guy running around, swimming around in the beach, being one of the greatest Ironman uh, athletes Australia's ever seen. He At 18, he won the Coolangatta Gold, which is Surface Paradise to Coolangatta and back. He won that twice, two consecutive years. He went on to win the Gold Coast Gold, which is the same event, just uh, titled a different name. He won seven Uncle Toby Super Series races. But more importantly, maybe, he was the winner of Celebrity Survivor. He is a Survivor Hall of Famer. And he was once dubbed the Australia's fittest athlete is he a man is he a machine he's an iron man matt come on <laughs> that's right i talk about none other than guy leach welcome to the show guy thank you lads good intro nice <laughs> now guy guy this has been a couple of years in the making now i i emailed you about two years ago and when we first came up with Australian Survivor Archives, and that was on the back of us interviewing Amber Petty on, a, on, on our sister show, The Oz Network, and we thought, hey, how about we start interviewing everyone? And mm. things kind of changed, and we ended up, we, we scrapped doing your season first, and we actually went back to the, the Channel 9, the original season, and that's why it's taken us a couple of years to interview you. And in that time, you actually did a podcast on Survivor, on, on David Jeanette, the Golden Gods podcast, which was a fantastic mm-hmm. interview, if anyone hasn't listened to that, I suggest you go listen to it. But this is something you don't really talk about too much. But if anyone, anyone that knows you, Survivor was a big part of your life. You, you love Survivor. You're, like I said, you're a Hall of Famer of this game. So, you know, give, give us a bit of a, I guess, a, a, what you were thinking, I guess, when two years ago I, I emailed you and, and said, hey, we want to talk to you about Survivor. Yeah, like firstly, you know, well done to you guys for, um, you know, keeping the dream alive with Survivor. You know, it's it's... It's one of those things, it was a long time ago now, you know, 15 years ago, but, you know, for me, um, Survivor was that one reality TV show that hooked me in. It hooked me in right from the start. Watched all the American seasons and and just loved it to death. And, you know, through my Ironman career, um, you know, I got asked to do the different celebrity shows. I was asked to do the ice skating, the dancing, the singing, the, you know, the Big Brothers, all, made all of them. I got asked to do all of them. And, and knocked them all back because I just, it wasn't my go. I, I, I wasn't into the things that they wanted me to do. And, um, and then Survivor popped up and I was all in straight away. Like it, it took no time for me to negotiate the fee, anything. I was like, get me the contract. I'll sign the contract. When do we go? And that was it. So, you know, for me, it was like just one of those dreams that you you get to live out and you know it's just yeah it's just just amazing it really was it's fascinating to think that they kept trying for you guy that after you said no about five times ah. like, this guy just doesn't want to do it well you literally go when you do survivor give me a call back click when you give me a survivor give, and <laughs> exactly. hey guess what guy we're doing survivor <laughs> but they still um i still get you know i mean i i don't i don't look for for press for press sake you know these days and yeah, it, it's it's not my go. When I did Iron Man, I did Iron Man because I loved it. I wanted to win, and you know, and the fame and all the rest of it came just came from that. And you know, I, I only got rung up, you know, what was it, end of last year to see whether I wanted to go on SAS. Um, mm-hmm. You know, and I'm like 57 years of age, um, but you know, and I and I I knocked it back. I said, no, no interest. Don't put me forward. 
um, you know, but if I got rung up to do Survivor again, then, you know, that would be a, a tough decision because, I, you know, I love it that much that, you, you know, I'd, I'd have to start thinking about going back again. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, I, I am going to get into a bit, we'll, we'll do this first, actually. So I always like, just for our listeners, like I said, everyone knows sort of what your background is with Iron Man, but just mm. get, can, can you just, before we get into the Survivor part of things, just give us a real brief sort of, background about how you got into the sport and then obviously how you became yeah. the Australia's fittest athlete and then on to Survivor. Yeah, so look, I, um, I was a swimmer from the age of nine. I found I was good at it. I was the best in the country at a few events from my age right through to I was 16. I trained in a squad where the coach was the head Olympic swimming coach for the Australian team. I was in a squad that was full of high achievers and, you know, I tell the story about there were six lanes in that pool and you started in lane one. Coach would tell you when you go up to the next lane, if you made lane six, you represented Australia because anyone that was in lane six in our pool represented Australia at the Olympics, Commonwealth Games, World Championships, those things. So for me, it was really easy to understand what I needed to do and that was to get to lane six as quick as I could. And... Um, I got to lane six when I was 17. I represented Australia. It wasn't, a, wasn't an Olympic year. Um, I saw Grant Kenny on a television commercial, the Iron Man uh, God back in the 80s. And, and um, I was sitting at home and it just caught my imagination. And literally I joined the Cirque Club the following week at Manly in Sydney. And 18 months later, I won the first ever professional Iron Man race called the Cooling Out of Gold. And my world changed. And wow. I, I literally, I was one of those very fortunate human beings that did the thing he loved the most and got to do it for a living for 15 years, you know. And when people start talking about, oh, you know, it looked really tough and you, you, you trained really hard and all those sort of things, yeah, but I loved it, you know, and I loved it that much that, you know, it just consumed me and, uh, you know, and, and I was obviously good at it and... Mate, it was just I got the highest highs through my life through that period where I could, you know, do what I loved the most, which was racing the best athletes in the world, you know, on a given beach over summer that was, you know, telecast on Channel 10 Live. So, but I've been very, very fortunate. And um, the fitness side was was a byproduct of oh, how hard I trained. I, I felt like I trained harder than anyone else in my sport. Others may disagree. Um, but certainly, you know, I never lost a race that was over two hours in, in our sport in my career. Um, and I put that down to my preparation and what I did to get myself ready to race. And, um, you know, that fitness component and being, you know, the fittest athlete, I competed in a number of events over that time. One being two days at the Institute of Sport in Canberra, where there was 10 events in 60 minutes covered it and it was a, you know, a full hour show and um, the best athletes from all different sports came out and competed and I won that whole thing. So that's why I was dubbed Australia's fittest athlete, I suppose. And um, wow. yeah, so you look, look it's, been a, it's been a good journey and, mate, you know, it, I've, I've been very, very fortunate to, to do something, to do things in my life that I, I love the most and, um, and got to make a living out of it. Yeah. No, what what was a better feeling, winning that first pull and get a gold, or when you were dubbed Australia's fittest athlete? I think um, you know the, the the funny thing with that first the calling out a gold. It was it was a race that was born out of a movie, yeah. and and a guy called Michael Edgeley. For those that you know are younger listening, they won't know who he was. But in the eighties, he was like the the dream promoter. He brought like the biggest circus acts to Australia back when that was a massive thing. And he was the promoter for this movie and they needed a real race in the, the storyline of the movie um, that was more than just an Ironman race at a surf carnival. And um, they came up with this ridiculous event, which was from Surface Paradise, where you ran, swam and paddled all the way to Coolangatta, 23 kilometres in January heat in Queensland. and then did the same back and they filmed it for the movie, took us, you know, used us as the sort of the overview and then got the actors in and Grant Kenny played himself in the movie to then go and tie up the actual 
last part of the actual movie itself. And so they put $50,000 worth of money on it, $20,000 worth of gold as a first place. And I turned up to that event on the Gold Coast and it was promoted that heavily that a quarter of a million people came out on the beach wow. along the coast on that day to watch it. Um, and I turned up unknown to anyone but my friends around Manly and I left the beach that day and woke up the next morning with a hangover, <laughs> having won the race and I was a household name in the country. So it's sort of, you know, when you sort of say, what's the greatest, you know, feeling or moment of my life, that's certainly the biggest change up in my life to, 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 to wake up the next day and be on the front page of every paper, the lead and every TV, you know, news outlet and radio and have everyone recognise you compared to a day early when, there, when no one even, even bad you an eyelid it was a very strange thing. Yeah. Were you expected to win or was there someone else that yeah. was a favourite? No, I was, because I came into Ironman late, like I was, you know, you know yeah, when your kids join nippers down the cert club and do the nipper stuff around the country, well, I never did that. And so I was swimming because I wanted to go to the Olympics and, um, you, you know, it was, it was a, a situation where um, I came in late and I gorged myself on workload to catch up. And I'd only been in the circ club for a year, just over a year and a half, about a year and a half, when that race popped up. And, you know, I sort of jagged the race in a lot of ways because the conditions were good that day. And I walked off the beach going, I can't believe I've won. Um, but I was a bit lucky as well to win it. I won by a minute and a half. Um, and, you know, my life changed. But the race was on the following year and I made sure that I trained even harder and learn from that first year and went back the next year, won it by five minutes wow. against, wow. against everyone. So, you know, like, I suppose, you know, if you look at me, I'm a very determined type person that when I want something, I'm not afraid to go and do extras to, to, to get myself in a position to get what I want. Yeah. It's, it's fascinating to think that the final two of Celebrity Survivor 2006 could have very well been Olympians because we talked to Justin Melby about yeah, the fact that true, yeah, had he yeah. been in a different period of his freestyle skiing career when freestyle skiing was at the Olympics, he might have been Olympian. And for yourself, might have been Olympian. I, I bring this up, Guy, because one of our sister shows off the podium is an Olympics podcast. Just just on that quickly mm -hmm. before we get to Survivor. Had yeah. it, you mentioned because it wasn't an Olympic year. Had it had been an Olympic year, you know, would how do you think you could have gone? How far? I mean, you said you're the best in Australia at some of your events. I mean, yeah, have you gone oh, look, into I these? was, I was, set, I was sort of 16 years of age at the um, the Olympic trials, and for a male, you, you're just a bit underdone as far as your your growth and your strength goes. You know, you don't really hit your peak till you're sort of 18, 19 in strength and just size and and that sort of thing. I mean, you get your rare freaks like a, an Ian Thorpe that comes along and, and females mature earlier um, in sport and swimming than men. Um, but I was just, the Olympic four-year cycle didn't suit how old I was. You know, I needed to go another four and at the age of 20, I would have been at my peak. I would have been, you know, raring to go. But, you know, I, I fell in love with Ironman. I fell in love with the whole idea of it. and. Mate, lucky I did because, you know, it was just the 15 years I got from it were the golden years in the sport. You know, it was so big. I saw it grow in front of me. I was there at the very front of, of what happened. And, you know, they're memories that I'll never forget. And, you know, it, it was just, it was so exciting. It really was. Yeah. Just an interesting fact about Survivor before we get into to your game. Um, ben, remember when Lincoln Howes, he was the, the, um, he was the host of the very first Channel 9 one. But from what we've heard, I, I believe it was Grant Kenny almost. It was either Grant Kenny, Kenny or Trevor Hendy. One of them um, almost yeah, became, Grant Kenny. Yeah, almost that. became the host yeah, yeah. Of, of that season. It, came, it basically yeah. came down to Grant Kenny and Lincoln Howes. And in the end, they, they went with Lincoln. But that, I mean, that was, would have been quite interesting having, I guess, yeah, an Iron Man. Um, could, could you see yourself as being a host? He would have done a good job. You know, Grant was always um, good in front of the camera. Um, and, yeah, he, he, you could tell he could suit that position. Um, you know, the fact that they 
went le sort of left field that you would think to to audition him, and he got to the last two would, would just show that he was, um, yeah, he was he would have done a good job. Yeah, so like for me, mate, I just wanted to be in it. I, I wouldn't, <laughs> I wouldn't want to host it. I want to get in there and get to it again. <laughs> you know. So how are you going to go? Like, oh, I'm a competitor. Yeah. Yeah. Just on that topic, while Matt's brought it up, you mentioned obviously you were a big fan of Survivor before you go on. That's the only one you wanted to do. Do you remember the Australian version that aired before your season, the Channel 9 one from 2002 at all? No, bits and pieces. Bits and pieces, yeah. Yeah, not, um, not like they sort of, it's funny because I've seen so many, it, it, don't, like, it does blur into other ones, mm. to be it fair. Um, but... Yeah, certain seasons would grab my. You know, it's like the it's the characters in it yeah, that gets yeah. you, isn't it? And you you know, if you gravitate to a few, um, you know, it's it's hard not to watch. Um, so yeah, the ones that you know, the ones that I like, that are memorable for me are the, are the ones where the characters are are really interesting. Yeah, it, it's sure. it's so true. What what guy said? I mean, sometimes Ben even. I mean, I've seen every season. There's been, but I mean, sometimes Ben mentions a person. And I'm like, well, what season was that on? But yeah, it, but then certain people and I'm like, oh yeah, I know exactly what season they were on. But uh, I mean, there's so, I mean, there's so many seasons of Survivor now, and I mean, it's been going for what two decades now. So you, you, it's easily to get, to get them all mixed up. Yeah, for sure. Look at it, and if you yeah, if you watch lots of stuff, it's I mean, you'd have to have a photographic memory to sort of really be able to pinpoint. You know every every different um, season and who was in that one against mm -hmm. someone else and all the rest of it. Yeah, yeah. So, so when you get that call, you you get on board. Um, we always like to ask just in terms of of contracts and everything because we found out most of yep. the players on your season were on. Yeah, I've heard you ask a few questions. I went off. Yeah. yeah. How much do you want to disclose to a guy like? I mean, I'll tell how much you. Were I'll you tell on? you everything. I'm, I'm on an open it. book, mate. Open book. Yeah, shoot away. Tell me, ask me anything. Yeah. So that's all. I mean, what was what was your signing fee and, and kind of what was your per episode? I, think, I guess yeah. payment. I think so. I was on, and I'm pretty confident that Justin and Gabby that were flying in were on better deals. They got more money, right? Um, I'm pretty sure Elton and I were the same because we 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 discussed it um, out in the jungle. Um, but I, I, it was 20K, 20,000 to sign on. And every time you got, you got through a tribal council, you got another five grand. So you knew that every second day there was another five going on top of what you signed on for, right? So, you know, if you, if you looked at it from the point of view of, you know, and, the, and the, the beauty with celebrity survivor was it's an easier one to win because you've got plenty of people that are just going on it, mm. not being real survivor fans and mate, they're just going to fall because of it. So it's, it's an easier one to win compared to the normal survivor, I would say, but certainly some people would have gone on for their fee and they might've negotiated a bit more upfront because they knew they weren't going to survive, you know, for very long. So they took the money. But for me, it was 5k every one I got through. If I got into the final, um, if I got voted out, but I was on the jury, it was an extra 15 or 20 that you got. So there was like money there at the back end. Mate, you got paid $100,000 um, as a one-off fee to win. And it was written in the contract. So it was like winning the lottery where you're not gonna get taxed on that money. So you got taxed on your appearance fee because appearance fee is, is like any job where it's a salary, but a one-off fee that you're not gonna win again um, is not taxable. Um, so I got that. And then also on top of that, I got $100,000 for the charity of my choice as well for winning um, the whole thing. Yeah. Which, so oh, look, it was a decent coin when you add up the fact that oh, yeah. I, I, I had that stint off and then got the chance to come back on as, we've, as you've discussed during this uh, season. But, um, so I didn't get that money for the ones I was out, but um, certainly that 100 k that you get for winning it is a, is a big chunk of money and that's 15 years ago now. So, you know, it's worth a bit more than what it is now. Yeah. It's, it's fascinating because I, I realised at the time of us recording this, you, we haven't aired, so you haven't heard the Justin interview and Justin mm. was very upfront about why he did it. He did it for the money and he told us how much he earned. It was, it was fascinating the honesty that Justin gave for that. But and, and, how much as, did, did, and how much did he get for? About 80 odd thousand sign on fee, I think, Matt, wasn't it? it? Like, and a lot yeah, of that yeah. came down to 
the sort of the the agreements he was on in the US sort of with um you know yes. actors uh unions and things like that they yeah, sort of had to pay him for for that side of things but look I mean, and, and just just on, and just on that to interrupt um he played the game like he was after money right mm -hmm. so you know the difference between him and I and I like Justin and we got we got on fine and I don't I don't have a bad word to say about him but I'll say this his style of playing the game of mine were completely different in that I was there to win and I didn't give a fuck about the money. Mm. You know? Well, I was going to ask that because it was the opposite from Justin. I mean, he literally admitted to us when he got to the final tribal council, he didn't give a shit. He had made his money. He didn't give a shit if he won or not. And that's where well, the thing is uh, such the, a the discrepancy between the two yeah. of you at the final tribal. Yeah. And look, the thing is he, he put his best foot forward to try to win. Like when you got a guy that, you know, tried to go to the Olympic Games. He was a black belt in martial arts. I mean, the guy's competitive, obviously. Like, he's quite talented. He's, you know, he's good in front of a camera acting. Right? He's, he's had the sporting background as well. So, you know, and, he's, and he, he's a nice guy. He's pleasant and all the rest of it. So he's got that complete, complete mixture of, um, of, of talents. But, you know, like he was, and, and the rumour was going around when we played the game that he was offering money <laughs> to different players to get them on side, you know, where I didn't offer any of the players any money to, to try to cut deals and what have you. And, and I sort of, to the point I nearly had, I had the shits myself when I got voted out the first time, um, even though it was pretty obvious with the merge that they were going to start chopping out, you know, the physically strong ones. Um, and when I got that chance to come back in again, I'm like, Mate, I'm, I'm not going to fuck this up this time. You've, been, you've given me a, an hallelujah, and that was your mistake. This is David Mason. I don't care. I'm going to make sure I get up and win this thing. So, you know, and that was what I cared about. I wasn't counting money as we went. I didn't care about the 100K at the end. I just wanted to frigging win. Yeah. Yeah, and I think that's what we, we love about you as the winner of this season. Yeah, you know, like, we've been very open about we're, we're not fans of the twist, you know. I current day Survivor have twists where people are coming back all the time. Yeah. I think it was the timing of the twist and how they did it. That, that Completely that, got it wrong. Completely yeah. utterly got it wrong. And I, let, let me tell you this, right, because you'll, you'll wonder. We had no clue. When I came back from, from dinner there at the, uh, at the resort, and, mate, the first I knew about it was a letter under my door um, <laughs> at 10 o'clock at night to go get in a bus the next morning at 6 a.m. to go back into the game. That was it. Wow. So, you know, like we made no, no clue whatsoever. And it was highly unfair in, 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 in a lot of you know, instances for Imogen, Nicole, David, because, I mean, David Mason's theory obviously was there's three there, I'll bring two back in, three beats two, it gives me some more content, it'll, it'll make for a more interesting show. And you know what? Let's just hope Imogen wins because she's the lamb that's turned into a tiger. And that was yeah. his play, right? And he thought, mate, even if it's Guy Leach and Justin coming back in, mate, sanity will prevail and three will be two, right? And, you know, we knew what we were in for. And, um, mate, and I wasn't going back in to be a lamb, you know? So, you know, and they, he screwed it up and, and it, you know, and it, and it basically bit him on the ass. And, you know, when you interviewed him, um, and I listened to the interview that you did with David, you know, you could tell it there was a sour taste in his mouth and he nearly, he nearly put, he, he sort of discounted Survivor as being that, you know, something he did, but he, he wasn't that proud of it. And it was because of the twist not going right for him. Yeah. He, he didn't think it was going to happen. I, I think basically that's what, what, what it came down to. He didn't think it was going to happen. And, and Justin his interview is quite amazing too because he, he talks about the pressure he got from David Mason not to take you to the end. Mason, Mason pulled him aside. Like, I nearly yeah. had, a, I had a running with Mason over it. Like, you know, I, I wanted to bash him, right? <laughs> this is all stuff that you don't see right, that was filmed. And to the point where he ran into the jungle the next day and hid and mm. didn't come out for half a day, right? Wow. Didn't come near the, um, the, the site... The, the challenge, the whole thing, is I wanted to kill him because, mate, the integrity of the show was completely and utterly, mate, 
just broken up by what he did. Mate, the, the producer, the director cannot come in mm. to a show and take a competitor out away from the camera and start feeding them full of ideas of what they should do. It's a game. Mm. It's a competition, right? And it was bullshit. So I lost it. Yeah. Which is, I mean, that's, and that's the thing that, we've said so much throughout our episodes. Uh, I mean, I said it's the worst twist in Australian Survivor history only because of the timing. If they do it, it at is. the merge. They, I mean, in the US version, when they first did it uh, on the Pearl Island season, the Outcast twist, they straight away when they were voted out said, you've got a chance to get back in the game. We're going to give you rations. You still need to live, you know, limited means to be fair so that when we bring you there, whereas like obviously you're, what, eating probably steaks and drinking course, beer and chilling with Elton and all that kind of stuff and of you've got all that ready to go. So it's kind yeah. of it's that weird fact that you've got that boost coming back into the game. You know what? You look at it, I look at it and go, mate, it, it is what it is. Yeah. And... Mate, you know, like, don't give me a second chance because it's the dumbest thing you can do. And, and mm. I orchestrated with Justin, mate, exactly what we were going to do if we got, you know, if it was him and I that got back in, right? And, and, and that's, that's where we and, can't and Gabby, fault you. Mm. Yeah, because yeah. it's not your yeah. fault. You played to the rules that were presented. And mate, you say oh. that in your final trouble. You say, well, I'm sorry that I got voted out, but the rules are the rules and that's what I played to. So it, it is, you did it is exactly what, what it is. you could do. I, yeah. I can't do anything more than that. And I'm not the producer, director of the, um, the series. And it's not my decision to come back in. I never knew that I was going to come back in. But you know what? I just did my best. And, and why would I want to go and get macheted again and get, and get thrown out again for the second time? Yeah. It's like, you know, it's like I'm, I'm a competitor. Like out of anyone, everyone in there, I have a history of being probably the most competitive person that was in the lineup. So I was always going to do that. And the thing was, you know, in, in David Mason's defence, I'll say this, mate, he always thought three would be two. Yeah. He, you know, it should he always have. thought three it would be two. <laughs> and, and that's David what he should have. And David was like, <laughs> yeah. he was adamant. To the girls, you know, you got to hang in there. And it was like, I never played, I played a straight bat to the girls right through the series, um, through the season. And, you know, and when, when we went down with the, um, the, the you know, with the, the storyline about David wanting to go and throw the girls under the bus and compete against the guys, mate, it was the first time that I came up with something that wasn't true. So I knew that, you know, chances are they might take the bait because I hadn't come up with anything that was ever cited during the time I was on the show where anything I said wasn't exactly right, you know. And I, and I hope that was going to be the case. And that's why Imogen at the end had the shit so bad because, mate, she fell for it, yeah. Which is so fascinating. I mean, obviously we're jumping a bit to the end of the game, but we're on the topic. We might as well stick to it. It's yeah. if what you did was on the Channel 10 version, you would be lauded for amazing gameplay. And it is amazing gameplay because you are presented with the rules that are in front of you. You and Justin have come together. This is what we need to do to try and get to the end to win. You do it. It works. You win the game. And the, the sad fact is, Guy, is that that gets overlooked because you were voted out and spent a week out of the game. And it's like... Yeah, but I, and I'm good, I'm good with that, you know. Like, I, I know what I did on the show. I know that, mate, that David... Mate, he went to tribal council on that, on that night. He left all his stuff back in the shelter because he was completely and utterly congruently believing that he was coming back to camp and I was going home, you know? Uh-huh. And it, it even made for, for me an even better, sweeter, you know, stab in the back because literally it, um, he got blindsided as good as you could get. And, and, you know, the irony is that it's the politician that made I've gone and just put a knife into him and he hadn't even seen me coming up from behind. So that was, that was a good feeling. Um, I think that, and, and I got on with him fine. And the thing was, I actually went up to him um, when, we, when we first, I said to Justin, so there's two ways this can go. Um, one is that we actually talked David into jumping over to our side because we, we say to him, that he only has to beat one of us because if he takes either one of us two into the final two, he will win because he's been there the longest period of time. As opposed to taking either one of the girls to the final two, he can't beat Imogen and he is, and he's, it's questionable whether he probably would beat Nicole, but he can't beat Imogen as opposed to taking us. So I put it to David 
And David said to me, look me straight in the eye and said, mate, I wish you all the best. Do what you got to do, but I'm sticking with the girls. And that wasn't on camera, right? So I'd, I'd made my peace with him. He said, go and do what you're going to do. And I'm like, went back to Justin. I said, he's out. Plan two comes into play now. I'll keep David occupied, go over to the girls and let them know that David's going to flip. And then make sure you say to, to the girls that David will come up to you after you've spoken to them and he will reiterate that he's not going to go and do the jump on you. And it went to, to plan exactly like that. Yeah. It's fantastic gameplay. And I think what David said, David Oldfield said that the one thing he didn't account for was stupidity. And, and in, in, in that is meaning the girls flipping on him because he, he was sure. saying he was so loyal. But from hearing what you're saying, I think the one thing he didn't count, account for was how hard you were playing and wanting to win. And that is brilliant that you've actually, you've gone to him first and he, he's, a, he's told you, instead of just pretending he was going to go along with you, he's actually said, hey, I'm not going, I'm going to stick with the girls. Yeah. You've come up with plan B and he, he never thought that was an option. So, I mean, that's an absolute credit to your gameplay and I guess why you ended up becoming the winner of the season. Look, I knew that, um, yeah, there's a couple of things in that. First one was that, um, that you know, he, he's, he's a smart guy. Like he's, he's highly intelligent. He's opinionated. He doesn't suffer fools, which, is, which we saw in his podcast with you guys. He'll call a spade a spade. Um, but, you know, he wanted to be seen. I could tell during the being on the, the island with him that he wanted the audience to not see him as a politician that was two-faced but seeing someone who was honourable, right? And hence why he was just, no, nah, I've given my word, I'm going to stick with this. But in the same token, you sort of knew that the girls... Even though they sort of believed him, he was still a politician in their own, in, in their own head. Like they're thinking, well, he's a politician. What Justin's saying and Guy's saying could be true. And that was the crack there that got us across the line. You know, had he not been a politician with his background, then it would have been a harder sell. But I just banked on the fact that they were like, well, he is a politician. So he, would, he could flip very, very easily. And, and, it, and it is plausible for him to think, you know, for them to think that, he wants to take on the boys because he wants to be a big man. So, yeah. Guy, I, I know we've sort of gone to the end of the game play here, but let's go back to the start. Who did you know coming into this? I know Wayne Gardner said that he had, he knew you before going onto the show. Yeah. Did you know anyone else? Yeah, he was a manly guy and around my area. He moved from, up from Wollongong, so I sort of would see him around now and then. Um, mate, no. No, I... I no, I didn't know. I didn't know anyone else at all um, going in. Uh, no, so it was. Um, yeah, yeah. No, I, I sort of. I tried to play the. I, I was trying to be nice to everyone. I was very aware that, you know, you've got to you know, the, the, look. The hard thing with Survivor for a celebrity, um, and I don't know how much you've spoken about this, is that. You got to go back to your life as, and look. And some of the people on there weren't that famous, right? Mm. So it's not as big a deal. But the ones that had a bit of fame and they make money out of their name, mate. If they want to keep doing that and they act like a dick on the show, like we've seen on some other reality shows, mm. mate, it can affect their um, their income and their careers. So I was very aware that, mate, how are you going to win this thing? But be nice to everyone um, and keep your you. Your, your reputation intact because you want to make, you know, money out of your name back in those days, but then still win. So it was a real conundrum, you know, and, um, yeah, and the thing is, the other thing is, like, you go on Survivor when you're not known and you can be someone that you're not, but you can't be that when you're, when you're famous. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so it's, yeah. you know, it's, it's a different, it's a completely different style of game, really. And it's also, it's also different too because this is, pre-social media as well. So I, I want to say that the sanctity of celebrity was a little bit more back then because you made a name for yourself through your achievements in the sporting field and everything else. So you're not out there making an Like, I mean, we're literally seeing social influencers now. I'm not trying to take away from a social influencer. But no, you should. You should take away from them because they, they don't really do anything. And, and it's... Uh... In some ways, it's a blight on society now that you've got these people that really don't contribute anything worthwhile in society 
you know, being being lauded as someone that you'd look up to. It's a it's a joke. It's and that's where I think it's we, we said at the very beginning, sort of looking at the cast and, and there were questions as there are in any celebrity show of are these people really celebrities and all this kind of stuff. But at the end of the day, I think Matt and I both came to the conclusion that we wouldn't change anybody on this cast. I mean, Anna Kornikova was rumoured to be nearly on there. It would have been mm. interesting to see how Anna Kornikova goes. But <laughs> at the end of the day, I think kind of we got a pretty good cast. It gave us a pretty good season. So, you know, it, I don't think that's really going to change it, too much. Can I, just say, on there. <laughs> can I just say too, Guy, the last thing, I mean, you already you already had uh, Gabrielle Richens on your tribe on the beach. Imagine if you had her and Anna Kornikova. I mean, that would have been too much to deal with. Could have been a, could have been a cat fight. Could have been, yeah, been good to watch. Could have been like you know. Could have been got him in the mud. Yeah, what was that actually having having a tribe because obviously it was men versus women. But Justin Melby went to the women's tribe at the, at the start, and yeah. and Gabriel Richards was on. The, it, there seemed to be there was conflict between Wayne and her, and then and then when you did the tribe swap with with Wayne and and Imogen and and Nicole, and then you were always trying to be. I mean, you you. I mean, you seem like a likable, very likable guy now. You you were very likable on the show. Mm-hmm. You always seemed to be that middleman that was tr- that was trying to keep oh, the look, calm, and Wayne just couldn't help himself. Well, like you know, the, and the issue was, out of all the people I knew going into it, yeah, you know, it was Wayne who just could put girls offside. Yeah. You know, and you know, on record, he did that. And you know, I, I literally was in a position where. You know, I, I could go down the toilet based on, you know, what he was doing. So, you know, it, it made it really, really difficult for me um, to to try to keep getting through each each day with him, you know, causing grief. So I was trying to just sort that out and, you know, just trying to survive. And so, you know, like there were times when, in camp, I'm thinking, oh, my God, you know, I've sided with Wayne and <laughs> mate, he's, he's driving the girls up the wall and I'm going to go down the toilet because of it. So, you know, it, you know mate, survive is hard and, and it's, it's very, yeah, you know, it's fluid. It, it, it changes a lot. But the one constant was that he was giving the shits to the girls and I, need, <laughs> I needed to stick around. So I'm just, you know, I was trying to do my best. Yeah. Was Gabriel as lazy as Wayne made out? And, and I guess that the edit did try to make out that she didn't do too much. But what you, you seem to have a good relationship with her. Yeah, I got mate. She was the, she was the vote that got me across the line. Yeah. So you know she was mates with Justin before she went on the show, and she mm. voted for me, and that was the difference between yeah, that was the three two vote. Yeah. yeah. So you know, like somehow based on my behaviour on the show that she saw, she literally went from being voting for a friend and going going with me. So, yeah, we got on fine. Mate, I, I liked her. Was she lazy? No. Was she the most active in the place? No. Did she need to be? No. Um, you know, she, she would have got 80, 100 grand up front to do it because of just, you know, her name at the time and all the rest of it. And she was a legitimate famous person. And, you know, for a beach which is tropical and chucking her in a bikini, Mate, you know, David Mason's no idiot. He just yeah. he was just putting, you know, good looking bodies and what he could on the beach. Now the thing is like from a celebrity point, I don't see myself ever as a celebrity. I was a sportsman. I was an Ironman champion, you know, and and I couldn't give a shit about celebrity status. I just went on Survivor because I wanted to go on Survivor because I loved it. Um and there were people on there that weren't that famous, but mate, when you've got a budget that's not that big. And you can't you chuck in everyone eighty a hundred grand to sign up, then you get what you get. If you had if you had a million dollars, well, you'd get Hugh Jackman probably go in and have a crack. But you ain't got a million dollars to give to him. So it is what it is, huh? You know. You, you mentioned about good looking bodies on the beach. Now I have to mention Ben Wynn. Now that, that guy had a rig on him. <laughs> what he, was, he was it was it was like um he, he reminded me of someone like um what uh, is the mate? Remember uh, Ian Roberts, the footy player oh, back yeah, in the eighties? Yeah. Yeah. Just, just a, just a specimen, you know. Like when he rocked up, I was like, Jesus! I mean, I thought I was um, fit and strong and everything, but he was like, I'm six, six one, six two. He was like six foot five and made over a hundred kilograms of just sheer muscle. Yeah, it was a joke. 
Yeah. Was there any, ever any pressure from David Mason? Because obviously Ben Wynn wasn't a celebrity. We, we still don't know why he was there. or I, I, We think it's they just ran out of money and they had to fill a 12th per- person. David Mason couldn't really remember. He said he thought he knew him from maybe the mole when he auditioned for the mole. We can't yeah. track Ben Wynn down. We're not even sure if that's his real name or not. There's no, he's like a ghost. But... Was I've heard you pre- say that. It's pretty funny, isn't it? It's pretty funny. Well, I tr- trust me, I've tried everything. This guy wow. is untraceable. It's it. wow. well, One day we hope to get him on, but I got close. I got I, I tracked him down to about 10 years ago and uh, wow. he was doing apparently doing some work, um, some private security sort of work over in Afghanistan, but um, Gee, that's the last I've fun. heard. But was there ever any pressure from David Mason for you guys to vote him out straight away because he wasn't a celebrity? No, that was me. I, I, I was I was a um, I had a lot to do with him going. Um, I just I just he, he, like if he dug his way in, it was nice, and you know was he strategic on the surface? No, could he give us some good tips and things? Yeah, he had some he had a bit of knowledge from memory. Um, I was just concerned about him. You know, I felt like I had control over a lot of other people in there and I just didn't feel like um, – my gut feeling was I didn't want him hanging around for too long. Mm. So I, I had a bit to do with that from memory. Yeah. I've got to ask a quick question on Ben. Did he actually have more personality than we ever saw? Uh, because, no. I mean, he didn't seem Mr. Personality. <laughs> <laughs> Not a lot. I mean, uh, he was just yeah. – Mate, he, he comes from that army environment where yeah. he's just, you know, it's just, he's yeah. just different, mate. He's not a celebrity. No. Nah. He's not used to being out on, in cameras. Like, you got to, he's like a fish out of water on that show. Like, yeah. they would have, they would have given him five grand to rock up. They would have had five yeah. grand left in the budget. What do we do? And David Mason would have thought, mate, here's, here's a bit of fun. You know, we'll see how that goes. And there was, mate, not once was there any mention at all of, you know, getting rid of him. The only time that happened was with Justin wanting to punt me. And he came back to me, Justin came straight back to me and said, you wouldn't believe it, what Mason's done. He's had me hold up in the corner telling me all the reasons why you should go home and, um, and you know, and, and why we, we shouldn't vote, you know, one of the girls out. And, um, and he was even saying, oh, look, if you go down to the final two with the girls, you're a better chance against Leach. And, you know, I said, that's bullshit. I said, mate, you're on an even playing field with me because we've been out of the show and come back in. You go to the final two with anyone that's been there the whole time, mate, you're dead man walking. And that convinced him. Yeah. Well, one thing quickly I just want to touch on too. Prior to the game, I've heard you talk, you talked to the Golden God uh, about it, and I think you talked a little bit to me about it when I did the Hall of Fame interview with you last year, that you actually got yourself a, an expert before you went out to Vanuatu who, who had mm-hmm. uh, been in Vanuatu. Just give us a brief overview of kind of how you found that person and how much they helped you when you played Survivor. Yeah, so I found a guy that had lived in that jungle there um, for a few years with the natives. And um, I found him through a mate of mine's dad said, oh, I've got this guy because I, you know, a few of my friends knew I was going on Survivor. You weren't allowed to say a lot, keep it quiet and all the rest of it. But people knew I was going because you're going, you're going away for, you know, a month potentially and all the rest of it. So, and, and, my mate said, mate, my dad knows this guy that's lived up there with the, the natives. He knows the land backwards, knows what to eat, not what to eat, how to do this, how to do that. And I said, well, where is he? And they said, he's up in Brisbane. I said, well, if, I, if I paid him and flew him down, would he like a holiday for a few days? I'll put him up at the, uh, you know, the, the hotel on the beach at Manly and da-da-da-da. And, mate, he, uh, he agreed. So wow. I flew him down, paid him. And, mate, was with him for a couple of days just picking his brains. Yeah. Wow. So did he provide you more help than Ben Wynn? He gave me a lot more help than Benny, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he gave me a lot more help than Ben. I do want to say... T- I do, I do. I was just going to jump in there, guys. I was just going to say, you did mention guy um, Ben Wynn probably made about five thousand appearance fee. I, I, I think that was very generous. He probably got about a thousand. But, but in all, <laughs> in, 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 in all seriousness, I think that's what I love about you winning this season because there are a lot of critics out there that say, oh, that season doesn't count at celebrities, mm-hmm. blah blah blah. But I mean, this is someone that yes, okay, you were getting paid good money to be on there. Good on you. Like that's that's yeah. great. But yeah. you, were, you were actually then paying someone else to train you or give you tips to, so you could try to win this game. To me, that I mean, that just shows you that 
there was players on this season that were on there for the right reason. That's to win this game of Survivor. And I love that. Yeah, like, you know, the thing is, oh, I go back to my sporting career and, you know, any time I, I won was when I felt like I'd done more work and was better prepared than everyone else. So it's not rocket science, is it? You know, there was, that's why I said the celebrity survivor to win from a, an odds point of view, if you're keen to win it, is, is an easier one to win than a normal survivor because, you know, I, I know that many people have, that have tried out of my friends to get on Survivor and, and haven't got, they've got, you know, past the first, second, the third stage and not made it. So everyone that tries to get on Survivor on the normal seasons made a bus in to go on and they they know a lot about the show. Whereas when we went on, I could pick on the, the boat ride going over to the island, I could pick who was going to go home the first week compared to those that yeah. were going to stay. And the only one I got wrong was Image. Yeah. Well, she was the only one. I got them all right. I, I, I basically sat back, asked a few questions and just listened and just started analysing who knew what, why they were there, what they knew about Survivor. And, but I, I pinpointed David Oldfield to get to the last five. I felt that um, I, 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 I didn't see Nicole or Imogen, to be fair. I thought Elton would go a fair way as well so you know i sort of and i thought wayne probably wouldn't based on what so yeah so i had a sort of a, a feeling but you just mate, you don't go on the show without being sort of ready and i tell the story on the second night when it rained from five in the afternoon when it went dark till seven the next morning and, and literally got no sleep and the shelter we built was hopeless and it was just leaking down the um from the top everyone was wet freezing cold you know, a couple of people started whimpering and, like, there was, like, oh, this is fucked. I want to go home. I've had enough. Mate, and I just I just lay in my little ball leg, cold, going, mate, rain for the next five days. Because mm, all yeah. it means is I won't even have my name put up to go home yeah. because people will be putting their hand up saying, pick me, pick me. So, yeah. That's what we love it's here. Fun. I'm with Matt. Just love yeah. hearing that strategy. It's, it's funny because... Russell Hance, obviously a famous American and Australian survival yeah. player, he says the same thing. He thrives on this game when when the conditions are rough because he can handle those conditions and yeah. he relies on that to, to to do well in the game because while other people are struggling, that's no problem for him. So it's, it's great hearing you say that. Now, um, you, you mentioned Imogen that you thought she might go early. Now, she almost did. Mm. She, she almost went first. But did. thankfully yeah. for her, Kim, Kim Johnson wanted to go. But... Yeah. I guess that's why, I mean, her game was incredible, hence why she's a fellow Hall of Famer that was inducted yeah. along with you. Um, yeah, it really was an incredible game and I guess rise of rise to fame in the Survivor game. I mean, this is someone that really struggled early on, almost got voted out first, you know, could have easily gone second, but all of a sudden she was actually the last person to be properly voted out. She, she deserved to win, mm-hmm. you know, and... Um, you know, like, you know, I learned in Ironman races that there were times when, you know, I deserved to win and a wave hit me on the head on the last leg of a, you know, an hour race and I didn't win, you know, and, and you just suck it up and you, you get on to the next race. So, you, you, you luck plays a part mm. in, 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 in my sport and it plays a part in Survivor as well. And I got given that second lifeline, which pretty much cost Imogen the win because, look, her story of her journey through um, each episode and what she ended up becoming, um, mate, you couldn't beat that if you went to tribal council against her. And and if she could articulate anywhere near um, what she went through and how she changed, mate, it was over and out. You couldn't beat her. Mm. So, you know, like I'll I'll give her that for sure that, you know, that, yeah, like David Oldfield probably had he gone and he probably deserved to go to the last two with her, to be fair, like when you look at the game. And um, I would have thought it would have been a 4-1 or a 3-2 win to Imogen if that who, happened. Who would you have voted for if it was those two? Yeah, I don't... Yeah. Um, 
I mean, I guess you, you've got to put yourself back 15 years ago in the game. I know that's hard. Yeah. But, but who's... I mean, they, they both played incredible game. And we're, we're big fans, obviously, of Imogen, but we're also massive fans of yeah. David Oldfield's game. He's, he, it was an incredible game. And also, he was... You know, you know when, like we talked just a bit earlier about, you know, you, you watch Survivor because a few characters get you in and you're like, oh, I just can't wait to see this person on the next show. Well, David Oldfield was that person. Yeah. Now, you know, he was just memorable and he really dispelled probably out of all the cast on the show, the premeditated thoughts about him were completely and utterly different by the time you got to the end of the show from what you thought he was going to be. Huh? Yeah. And, 100%. yeah. yeah and, and like, and, and, and look, and, and he orchestrated that to a degree based on how he wanted the audience to perceive him to his credit. And that's the intelligence that he's got. Um, and he wanted to put a show on, mm. um, and he did that. And so he was memorable and he, he launched off the back of that into a bunch of other things to make sure that, you know, it, it, you know, life ticked on for him. But as far as like if sitting here now, to be fair, and had Imogen not taken the bait with Nicole and those two had gone down to the last two, me sitting here now knowing the game and everything and, and, and looking back on it 15 years later, I would vote for Imogen. If it was 15 years ago and I was on tribal council, I probably would have voted for David. Because oh, I, I was more mate, I was more matey with him. Yeah. Like I didn't realise I'd become matey with him um, like I did. And I, I just hung out with him more, you know? So, yeah. Just, just quickly on that, a question I'd love to get from you as a winner. I, I talked up a lot through some of our episodes how Nicole just seemed so likeable, so popular and just everybody seemed to get along with her. Yeah. Did Nicole actually have a chance of winning, do you think, at, at Never. any point? Never. Never. Right. So, you know, in Survivor, you know, every season you get the you get the player that just is just like that. And and no disrespect to her and, and to other players that come into the game. Mate, they don't have any big moves. They they don't have any real um strengths to, to really draw on. I mean, when you start talking about social game, can you count a social game when you're just, you're there not to ruffle the feathers and just be nice and that's it? Is that a social game or is that just you just cruising through the game? So, you know, you, what happens, right, is that, and, and you guys know this better than me because you guys are experts in watching Survivor. Mate, you need numbers on your side, but you want, you want safe numbers. You don't want people that can just, their threats, and that's where Ben, even though we all joke about Ben, you know, you, well, you guys joke about Ben. I don't joke about Ben. <laughs> I joke you about Ben. Matt likes you guys, Ben. No, so, wonder you know. fuck, no wonder he fucking doesn't want to go on your show. Yeah, exactly. He's been, he's been, he's been listening those... to the, every episode, every <laughs> podcast. But anyway, um, you, you need those safe numbers. You need the safe numbers, and you want to drag them through to the end. You want to, like, I knew that if I got Justin into the end with me, that I was, I was probably better than a 50% chance of winning. But I knew that if he went and I was still there with any one of the other three, I was gone. I couldn't it's, win. Like, you know that even, even yeah. in the state of the jungle and, and, and with all things going through your head and all the rest of it, mate, you make some calculations based on what you think is your best chance at the end and, you've, and you make decisions based on that as you go. Yeah, I actually love hearing that because the reason why I always kind of thought Nicole was a chance of winning is because we're kind of in that period of Survivor where, you know, this so-called Survivor resume is not a big thing as it is now. Now it is all about the, did you make the moves? Did you do this? Where sort of yeah. you're in that transitional period of Survivor where we're coming out of the more, it's all about the friendships, the mateship, the social, and the, the aspect of gameplay is much more important. So mm. I love hearing that to clarify that, that, that is something that works against Nicole because while she was likable, as you're saying, she's not making moves like an Imogen or yourself or a David is. No, and, the, and the, look, the thing is, you know, when they start, you start talking about, oh, they had a really good social game. Yeah. Well, mate, the, the, having a good social game is when, mate, you're being nice to someone up front, straight, straight on, but you're re ready to stab him in the back when you need to. Because you yep. want to win and you want to keep going, you want to keep moving forward. And when you get pushed into a corner, mate, you're ready to go and turn when you need to. Mate, she would have, she went down with the ship. 
And that was, she was always going to go down with the ship. So she was going to get dragged through like players in the past in other seasons because they don't have killer in them. The, the one thing I'd love to, have to learn, killer in yeah. you're talking about sort of that Wayne aspect of, oh, shit, shut up, Wayne. Like, you know, I need you. And you're kind of digging that hole. That vote out when Wayne goes. One of the best reactions. We love your reaction when when Wayne goes that night. I didn't realise I mean, I'd, I'd made such a big reaction to Fair when I saw it. I was like, geez, I did it. We, as you saw, we compared it to the Golden Gods famous uh, reaction yeah. uh, when he was sort of playing yeah. that on All Stars. But were you genuinely that shocked? Like, did you feel that Gabby was siding with oh, you that the, night? The girls, the girls gave me a number on no, no, Leachy. Well, because I sort of pleaded to them not to. I knew he was going to go, but but I just didn't want it to be that tribal council because I, like I was, I, I was, you know, I, I was still thinking like I could find an idol. I need to do something before the merge. Um, you know, I was very aware of the fact that life was cozy for me when I was up against another team and, and I could help them win challenges and all the rest of it. But I knew when the merge came that mate, I needed to have, you know, something up my sleeve or I was going to be in trouble. And as it turned out, I, I was right and I didn't find an idol and I didn't have something to, 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 to save me on that, on that, on that night. So with, with Wayne going, they told me he wasn't going then. He'd probably go the following one. And I thought, well, at least it gives me two more days to, to get my house in order. Yeah. Guy, you mentioned about idols. Now, obviously in your season, there, there was no hidden immunity idols. That wasn't a thing then, but current day survivor there's idols everywhere i mean there's people yeah. finding them every day would you be the type of player if you played now would you be the type of player that would go out and and search for idols yeah yeah well if you want to win i mean it it, it, it is just a dead set advantage to have one and you know i mean obviously we've seen some crackers where people go yeah. home with them in their pockets <laughs> you know, and you just think, oh my yeah. god and look just just on that um Mate, when you're in Survivor, and you, you know, and you're playing the game, and mate, you're in a, a week or two of, of doing it, mate. Sometimes your decisions aren't great for people, yeah. you know. And you sit on the lounge at home, and you get to see them, and then you think, why are you doing that? Why are you doing that? And you know, get the idol out, and but, you know, it's not that easy when you're there, you know. Just, and um, just mm. quickly on that point, though. So, so did you believe that there could be idols? Like, I mean, you'd watch the show, so you knew idols were a thing. Were you thinking yeah. that, hey, this yeah, is a I possibility? Thought, yeah, I did. I did. I did. Mm. I did. Interesting. I just thought that, yeah, I did. And I thought, you know what, I'm going to look and, yeah. you know what, and I, but I didn't want to bring it up because I didn't want other people to, to be doing what I was doing. So, yeah, I was, yeah, sniffing around. And did I you just, think of the whole I, fake I just idol knew thing, guy? What's that, mate? Did you think of like the whole like because if you were playing with people who didn't really watch the game, so did you think that well a fake idol would actually work with these people because they don't know what the fuck I'm talking about? I, I you know what, it, you know the irony with the whole show was that if you were too cunning, like in the end, Imogen had the shit to me because of that flip that I did, but you know they don't understand what the game is. So mm. when they when you go into Survivor and you actually don't understand that you're meant to out out strategize and do what you need to do, mate, they take that as an insult. But you know what it's like for a Survivor fan? That's actually like a pat on the back. Mm. It, um, and so that's what you're dealing with when um, you play Survivor back then 15 years ago with celebrities that never watched the show, some of them. Mm. They don't understand the core of what Survivor is and you're meant to have strategize and you do what you need to do to keep going forward. And at some stage, if you want to win, you're going to put someone down the toilet. It's just... It's just the nature of the show, and that's why it's so good. Um, and I was aware that a lot of them didn't see the show as such. So, you know, when I went to that final tribal council to plead my case, you, you couldn't say, but I did, a, I did an unbelievable move when I put David Oldfield packing, and you guys believed mm. it. They took that as an insult. They saw mm. that as being Guy Leach is a liar. And he was, you know, and so, yeah, they hated me for it at the time. Yeah. Which it plays into what I was saying before. It's kind of that bridging period where, yeah, you're selling moves, but you're still in that period where, as you're saying, that's insulting. You're lying. You're that, That's devious. Okay. That's that's not survive, which, I mean, as we know, it, it kind of is. The, the fascinating thing, we, we love what ifs and situations about had things gone the other way. That mm. tribal is such a turning point when Wayne goes, because if you play the what if that night, if 
Gab votes with you and Imogen goes home, all right? Mm. Just before the merge, Imogen doesn't have a chance to get back in the game. Yeah. Say Nicole goes in your spot and you're still in the game. Yeah. I, I mean, do you think that even with the knowledge of that twist, and we can say hypothetically that maybe it's Elton and Justin who comes back in the game, like, do you still think that you win or do you, does you getting voted out help you win? Yeah, look, yeah, it's a yeah, look, it's a it's a fair question. It's really hard to answer, isn't it? I mean, what what we do know, with Survivor, is mate, you've got your you have your plans up your sleeve um, on a day to day basis, and you've got your overriding thoughts on what could occur, you know, in a long term situation. But you can't ever be fixed on anything too much because things change all the time. And, and it's a it's a moving it's a moving piece every day and every time you go to tribal council um, um, or even when you know whether when the other side goes to tribal council and you don't you know you've got a you've got things shifting all the time so you yeah I mean it just does your head in if you if you overthink it too much but um, I would have been in a I would have been in a good situation if Imogen had gone because she ended up being a really strong player and she controlled Nicole to a degree. Um, and, mate, I, I, to her credit, she just got stronger and stronger as it went on. And, you know, I, 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 she was the shock factor for me out of everyone on the show, for well, sure. Yeah, I heard you mention on the Golden God podcast, you, you said that she was the one player you were scared of. And it was kind of like that was that was really interesting to, to hear that. But, like, I mean, just think about the dominoes, right? Imogen... I couldn't work her out. The reason why I was scared of her wasn't because she was physically stronger or everything, but I, I couldn't get a read on her. Mm. You know, and the thing with Survivor is you, you know people are bullshit, you know, but it's fine if you know they're, they're bullshitting you. You know, you, you, you yeah. just want to understand the animal they are. And so, like, and, and I feel like I'm not bad at picking someone and working out whether they're telling me the truth or not, but with her, I couldn't get a read. And well, I think she, and she was playing, course, like, the cover-up, which imaging. made it even worse for me. So I never really got to know her that well. And it, it yeah. just, yeah. It, um, it's, it's fascinating. Like, Imogen just is crazy. But, like, I was just thinking of the dominoes. Imogen goes, right? So then, therefore... We don't have probably Justin being confronted about bribing people because it was Imogen who kind of called him out. So hypothetically, yeah. if Nicole goes when you go, maybe Imogen uh, in you know Justin and Gab are more of a power couple. It's you, Elton, and David. Maybe like it's kind of yeah. It's interesting to think how that would have all played it, it, out. It, Justin would have struggled with that because as it went on, Gabby got less and less. I excited to stay there. It started yeah. to really eat into her where she just got sick of being hungry and she got sick of just, you know, having to, having to starve and be uncomfortable. Um, she handled it for the first week, but you could tell the cracks were coming in. So even Justin wouldn't have been able to talk her into staying there. Um, and, and knowing what we know now, had David been in our, and, El, and, and, and with Elton and myself as an alliance, we know now that David was never going to flip because he wanted his image to be portrayed to the general public as being a straight, playing with a straight bat. So then, and Elton, I, I could tell Elton was, wasn't going to flip on me and, and we, we made a decision to go to the last two together if either one of us survived. We wouldn't go and, uh, yeah, we, we wouldn't go and vote us each other out. We'd just go to the wire. So it would have been a nice situation for me. It would have been a lot smoother yeah. transition if it went that way for sure. <laughs> Yeah. Was Wayne before Wayne got voted out? Was he your plan A? Like, if he, if he would have got to merge and then you guys continue on, was he? Were you taking him to the final tour all the way? Um, if I could, because he um, he pissed off enough of the jury by the end that I thought that yeah. you know it was going to be an easy vote. Yeah, yeah, fascinating. Yeah, I, I just, I just knew I could. I knew I couldn't beat Imogen. I knew I couldn't beat her, and I thought I'm I'm probably not going to beat David, but. Maybe some chance, even having gone home, and gone out, and then come back. Um, yeah, but I, yeah, I was scared of Imogen because I just couldn't see any way that I could beat her if I went to, into try, try, you know, into the final two with her. Yeah. That, that's the amazing thing about Survivor, though. You know, like you ended up still winning. So in the end, you wouldn't change anything because it, it, it you won. Yeah. You know, and and that's a that's a beauty about Survivor. You know, we see it now with current 
players. You know, you can get voted out, but in the end, that's actually mm. works to your advantage because you go on to win. And 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 the same with you. So, I mean, in the end, you're probably lucky that none of those what ifs did happen. Yeah, because, like, you, know, you know what it is. It's it, it's all it's good sort of talking about the past and everything. And um, you know, I, I just feel very fortunate. Like not many people win Survivor. Um, and at the end of the day, it's a bit like golf. When you're right, you score down. Mate, you don't know how you got there. You just got the score, you know. And at the end of the day, I won. And I was dealt with the cards I was dealt with. And somehow I got up and, and got it done. Like, it's not easy getting up in front of a tribal council where a few of them are looking at you like they hate your guts and want to kill you, which, which is what it was like. And having to deliver a speech where, you know, that's the difference between being a survivor winner and not. So I still had to go through a lot of the journey to get to where I was ultimately, which was winning. Um, you know, and I, and I sit here proud of what I did because, as you said earlier on, and I had no say in the fact that I was going to come back in, but but I did everything right. Once I got back in, I made sure that I, I you know, got through the competition to get back in. And then once I got back in, the plans that we set, mate, we we executed them to perfection. Yeah, and to think that David Oldfield was going to fall for you know, a sports person up against a politician was going to flip, flip it, it was, you know, the whole storyline based on what we did, you know, I'm proud of. And, um, yeah, it's great. One of you, only you, eight people in the history of Australia yeah. to win Australian Survivor yeah. Guy. So. And, yeah. And, Guy, I like how you mentioned golf there. Now, I follow you on social media. And, and <laughs> being, a, being a fellow left-hander, I always love when you post that pic where you've got that left-handed swing going. You obviously like your golf. <laughs> I do. I do. I, it, it keeps me competitive. See, that's, that's the problem I've got. It's a curse when you have been a highly competitive individual and sport finishes and you can't. I can't run and swim as fast as I used to, even if I trained every day. And, you know, like there's part of me that, you know, the re- one of the reasons, the other reasons I went on Survivor was I got to compete again. You know, I love mm, Survivor yeah. and what it was. And the first few days I was there with the cameras and, and just the whole big show around it was like being in Hollywood. And I had to really sort of kick myself and go, well, you, you've come here and you want to go as far as you can. You want to try to win it. Don't get caught so caught up in the romance of Survivor that you actually, you know, get punted because you're actually not concentrating. So, you know, for me, it was probably more so than any other competitor that year. I was in love with Survivor so much that it was, it meant more to me than what it did the rest of them being in the show, being in the game. Yeah. You're definitely competitive because there's an incident. We'll talk about it shortly, but there's an incident at the end in that last challenge where you and, <laughs> you and, uh, Dicko Matt's been Dixon. dying to talk to you about this. Yeah, for a long he time, um, so. you, have, you have a few words with him, but but talking about Dicko, like what did you think of him as a host? Did you did you know him before you went on the show? Yeah, so Dicko, I never met Dicko before, and you know, you you guys had mentioned earlier that he was probably the biggest sort of name going into the show, which which is a fair comment because of Australian Idol and him being a judge, and you know, he was probably at the peak at, at the time of his fame, um, you know, as opposed to now where you don't see him at all. Um, so, yeah, so he was a good signing for them. He was probably a, an odd choice as a host, people would have thought, but he did a really good job. So I, I'd never met him before, um, but him and I got on like a house on fire and we became mates after the show and go and play golf together. And I actually trained him for a while and, because he wanted to lose weight. So I sort of um, got him on the fitness and the, and the right eating program and, and all the rest of it. So you're like, we, we spent a good chunk of time after the show hanging out. It was funny, the first time I actually spoke to him was um, after about the second or third challenge on one of those you know, tropical beaches. And we were walking off and the cameras had sort of stopped filming the, the game challenge and... Uh, and I screamed out, hey, Dicko. And he turned around as he's walking off with the crew. And I said, have I got skinnier or have you got fatter? <laughs> and uh, I just turned and walked off. <laughs> and, and the mob reckon later, they said he was just gutted. Oh. He was gutted. <laughs> <laughs> and he's going, have I put weight on? 
Anyway, that was he would have been, been living it up for that month in Vanuatu. You can't tell me that between sets, he he was he would have been having the time of his life. He was look, he's good talent, and um, the one line is he came up with, and you know, just the bits and pieces. No, he, he was good talent. I mean, it's it's always odd when you've got like a pommy on an Australian <laughs> show being the host, but um, but yeah, no, I thought I thought he did a good job. Yeah, That's why we did the Dicko Thug yeah. Life. He was yeah. like, the, the, like, yeah. like, we didn't do it with Lincoln. We won't do it with JLP because, like, he's the only one. I feel he kind of got a bit of that sass in the one liners that you would drop, and it kind of works. And yeah, no, like, yeah, there was there was a few lemons that he came up with. Like, he's got a bit of a talent for that. And um, yeah, no, he was good. And like, you know, it was funny. Like that, I, I can't remember exactly the the challenge exactly that what, that you were talking about before. Where I lost it. Um, because I think we had to we have to keep so, three yeah. hands and and feet on the ground or something. So it, it was the final challenge for to, to go into the final two. Now yeah. it started off you had to have all four points of contact. You were on like a yeah. um, pontoon. A pontoon on the water, yeah. weren't we? So, and then and then after a certain amount of time, you had to then only have three points of That's contact. That's right. Now so, I remember it. I and, remember vividly now. Yeah. So so now just you, to give you a bit of yeah. a bit of background to that, the day before. I started getting these like tropical cramps or something from, you know, if you eat too much fruit or, and you don't eat enough other stuff, you can get an upset stomach. You know, yeah. I, you know, that's, I assume that's what happened to me. So I had the runs and I'd get these cramps in my stomach and I'd start sweating. I didn't feel like I had to throw up, but I felt like I, I, I needed to go to the toilet and it, and it would last for about five minutes. And when they, when they came up with that challenge the next day, I'm like, oh, my God. If I get one of these, these uh, hits, I'm going to be fucked, you know. And so <laughs> I was really worried. And so and I thought, mate, they're playing this challenge on purpose to give Imogen the best chance of going through, you know. And, and so I, as I said to Justin before it, I said, mate, we've just got to beat her. You know, we, we both decided we're taking each other if we won the challenge to the last two. So it was literally two versus one in the challenge. And I was adamant that I was just going to do everything I needed to do to just hang in there and, and win it myself so that it didn't come down to, you know, to Justin versus Imogen and, and, and what have you. Because I figured that if Imogen won, my gut feeling was she was going to take Justin the yeah. last two, not me. So, so when, when I got called, David Mason in the background was on a monitor. And the monitor was looking at our hands and our feet. And you could change direction and move, but obviously you couldn't lift. It, it got down to two or three limbs on the ground, hands and feet. You could move around, but you couldn't lift it off the ground, off the pontoon. And I moved around a few times because I started feeling the cramps coming on. And Mason called it on the beach on the monitor. He said, said, at least lift it up his hand or something or his foot. Foot, and yeah, his foot. And I blew up because the day before was when he fronted Justin and pulled Justin aside and said, you can't take Guy to, you know, to the final two. You need to vote him out. Da, 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 da. You can't win if you go up against him and all this bullshit. And so I, I, was, I was filthy. And um, so when he called it, I was like, no, nah, he's just trying to get rid of me. You know, he's trying to get rid of me. This is crap. And so I called that, and that's why I had the shit so much. Yeah. Well, you say, you, when you, you say, saw the footage, when you yeah. saw the footage, did you realise you lifted your foot up though? Nah, because Dicko then they stopped, stopped everything, and they froze, and then Dicko got off the boat and went into the beach. Because I said to, I don't have this on camera. I said, I'm fucking not going anywhere. Oh, this wow. is bullshit. I'm not moving. Was that, was that on camera? No. no. The, all, no. all we saw was they showed what seemed to be your foot lifting off and Dicko basically going, you're out, guy, let's continue. And then you're just like, it's bullshit, mate. And then bullshit. you, you, you said, saw. I call bullshit. And then you yeah. sort of, there was a bit of back and forth. And then and then it just appeared that uh, Dicko sort of just moved on and just sort of ignored yeah, So, So that. what you don't see in the edit, so it was uh, before they edited, mate, I was that adamant that I didn't, that... Dicko said no, nah, and he knew I had an information, and Mason had it in for me at the time. And so Dicko said, no, nah, no, nah, I'm, not, I'm not counting it. 
until and so Dicko went in himself to the beach and re, rewound the tape and had a look at it. Wow. And then so then was Dicko like, yeah, sorry, guy, you did. Dicko said, mate, Leachy, I'm, I'm telling you, you it, I'm pretty confident that you lifted your foot off. And I still, to this day, don't know whether I did or not, but... But I well, the, the footage, the footage going. looks like you do, like if, yeah. if, like, yeah. and, and that, Matt froze and, it and like sent a picture, and yeah, that looks as like. As soon as Digo said to me, Leachy, mate, I had a look, and I'm pretty confident you did. I copped it on the chin, yeah, but I wasn't right. going to cop it on the chin from a bloke that tried to get me out the day before. Yeah, I was trying to talk Justin around. Yeah. Well, yeah, obviously you're skeptical, and being the most important. Immunity being the final one to get to the final two. I well, then see I had why, to count yeah. on Justin being yeah. the mission, didn't I? Yeah. And did you feel confident? Did you feel that he was going to do it? No, I just, I had the shits. I was filthy and um, I felt like an opportunity had gone missing where I had control and then I didn't have control. So mm. I was, you know, it, it came down to 50-50 then, didn't it? Mm. You know, Which because is... they set that, that challenge up to, you know, and fair enough, they set up a challenge to make it equally fair for Imogen against two strong guys and some of the other challenges prior to that were just physically imposing and, and the girls had no chance, which didn't make sense. You know, So I, I got all that, but I was just dirty that I'd literally taken the steering wheel away from my own hands. And it was, it, it wasn't up to me then to get to the last turn. Yeah. Just a two part on the, on the final tribal. Um, I mean, you talked a little bit about before, but first of all, I mean, were, when you went into that tribal, were you confident that you were, going to win? I mean, how were you feeling your chances? No, um, I, I, I did, um, I, I, I prepared in my head what I was going to say. I, you didn't have pens and paper and laptops there to write down your speech, you know, so you're literally having to go and just in your own head be able to articulate what you're going to say. And, and, like, and then you've got to look and go, well, I know my strengths and I know my weaknesses, but then you've got to look at what you did during the, the episodes, who you pissed off, who went down the toilet, who you, you've got no chance turning around with your speech and the ones that are on the fence maybe, you know, the ones that will vote for you, whatever you sort of say to a degree. So you're really, you're really positioning your talk to the, to the swing voters, you know. So you've got to go, well, then what is the content that I'm going to come up with that makes the most sense for them to hear that's going to give me a chance to, if they're on the fence going, oh, I don't really know whether I'm going to vote Justin or Leachy because they both, you know, they both got out, came back in. They both got some cert certain strengths. Well, you need to come up with a speech that turns that around. And that was the thing that I was um, toying in my head with what I'd leave out and what I'd put in. Um, and then secondly... I didn't know what Justin was going to say. You know, like, so you, you don't have that up your sleeve. So was I confident? I, I felt like I had a good chance, but not, no, I wasn't overly confident. You know, who who, who did you, were you counting on? Were you thinking, well, Elton's definitely going to vote for me. David I got probably Elton. is. Yeah, and on David. I knew I had David. Because, you know what, even though I torched him, mate, we were up front. Remember I said earlier that, mate, we had, that, we had the talk and I said, listen, they come over, three blokes against two girls, or three blokes, get rid of the two girls, and, mate, you're a good chance of winning because we've, we've had time out for the show, mm -hmm. and, and you haven't. And I thought that was a fair argument, you know? But he wouldn't budge based on he wanted the audience, the public, to see him being a straight, straight shooter. So he said to me, do your best, and I said, you do your best, and that was it. So I sort of knew I had him. So then it was, I had two votes. But then I, I knew Imogen and Nicole were going to blame me more than Justin for the for what we did, you know, because I, I, you know, they could tell that I orchestrated it, you know. So, so I, I was all down to Gabby. Them. Gabby yeah, was that she, one. She was a swing vote, mate. And then it was yeah. like, well, but she's mate with Justin. She she hung out in LA with him. They both done acting and done a. So I'm like, oh my god. So like it was, yeah, it wasn't as clear cut as you would have thought. Yeah, no way. Which Three, is, two. Just, Justin talked that up and like that was the real shocking thing about the fact that Gabby ultimately voted Justin out and then didn't get and Justin basically said it, it all came down to the fact that Gabby was pissed off with Justin because well, she yeah. didn't get told about him making these bribes and, and she was completely unaware apparently. So that's yeah, why well, Justin that, said that, that's why Gab yeah. didn't vote for me. That was his one regret. That was his one regret was he didn't he didn't sort of let her in on what was going on and, and right. in the end that 
backfired and and cost him the vote that ended up costing him the game. Which which well, the thing is, he, he, he and, and as he said, it was about like he wanted the hundred k, didn't he? he? Wanted the money, yeah. you know. Well, yeah. I, I think, um, yeah, which which is fine. I get that, but you know, like, yeah, I, I wanted to win for the title. Yeah, I want to win for the title. Now, guy, yeah. obviously, yeah, you're a massive Survivor fan. You win a title, but how good is it knowing that? Right Aid also received a hundred thousand dollars. Oh, you know the the thing was, mate. You get you, you get approached by different people when you've got a hundred k up your sleeve, and and for me these guys were, mate. They were big on doing the right thing by kids over in Cambodia that suffered much worse than kids out here in Australia, and so because of it, um, you know, and you're always you're always a bit concerned about you know, if my money goes here how much of it actually goes into the charity that we're talking yeah. about is it you know 80 cents of the dollar is it no. mate these guys built two schools in north cambodia for kids that just have nothing and they flew over there on their own money they gave their own time building this school a, ho- a whole group of builders went over on their own time and every cent of the hundred thousand dollars went into building two schools and wow. every year, 200 kids um, go through the system and come out and get jobs and, and have, have a better life because of it. So and that's wow. been going for 15 years now. Yeah. Fantastic. And are you still involved with them at all? Yeah, I, I, I ask what's going on and, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Just, you know, right. want to know what's, what's happening. So, yeah, it's like two schools from scratch were built with $100,000. It's, mm. it's fascinating just back to your point where you said, you the title man and like we actually had this discussion with justin how sort of justin was about the money and and matt sort of had mentioned that like if he had a one his season half a million dollars you're not going to say no but i mentioned that yeah half a million dollars would be nice but to me i'm with you guy to me it's more about the title you are the winner of survivor i mean what was that moment like when dicko flipped that card over you see your name on it and you you've won the fucking game um at the, the first feelings relief then a little bit of, um, not shock, but you just, like, you, you look again to see whether that's actually your name, you know, and you sort of <laughs> that split second of, like, really? Um, and my ventilation, because, you know, like, so for you guys that love Survivor so much, like, like there's few people who love Survivor as much as you two with what you do and, and, and you know, and... And so could you imagine, you know, like having your name read out at that final stage? Uh-huh. It's just, mate, it's, it's like Iron Man wins were different to winning Survivor. Survivor. The Survivor win was like like a Disneyland trip as a kid that just comes to life and it's real. It's just, yeah, it's bizarre. And, you know, I showed you guys and we'll get a photo, which I'll send to you, of my wife put together the, you know, the, the pieces of, Survivor with me winning it and the bandana and all the rest of it um, into a frame and that sits in my house on the wall and you know and that's a moment of my life that will never get taken away that I'm I'm just over the moon proud of so you know like for me I got given that chance to to come back in and still compete in it when I was voted out and it's nearly like it feels like because I love Survivor that much that that happened because of that reason, you know? Like, I felt like, you know, if, if anyone was going to win Survivor that season, I didn't feel like I deserved it more, but it was going to mean more to me because I'd followed Survivor for so long. Yeah. Guy, what was your luxury item? Um, what was my luxury item? Jeez, you know what? How funny is that? Is that the start of Alzheimer's? Um, <laughs> We've we've heard some funny ones. I know Amber, Amber Petty had mascara, but uh, Kim Johnson had had the thousand thread Egyptian yeah. cotton sheet, which we thought was brilliant. I think what did uh, what did Wayne had? I think he had a knife and pop, maybe pocket knife or something. David Oldfield had vitamins. I remember that because I remember yeah. one stage I was feeling I was feeling like I was getting a cold, and he gave me a few vitamin C's. Echinacea. <laughs> I remember that. Um. Uh. uh what was it? Um. Fiona Horn had ta- uh, tarot card tarot cards. Um, Elton, Elton had, had football. Footy. Football. He did, a, yeah. he did a think, footy. We played with the football. Yeah, we, we played with the football the first day until you got no food and you had no energy to play with the football. <laughs> Justin <laughs> Melby had the guitar. Uh, you, you, you can't remember what you did. Lads, I, I did say can't. Re- I, 
You pair your favourite DTs or something? <laughs> you, know, you, know, I think it, you know what it was? You know what it was? I, I took a, I took a, um, like a, like a duffer sort of jacket that I could turn into like a blanket and also turn into a pillow. Ah. Actually, talking about, so when you re-entered the game, yeah. You, all of a sudden you had a new jacket. Were you just allowed to bring new clothes into the game? When I, you probably, brought... I probably did. I, I, I saw you talk about that in another podcast. And to be fair, I can't remember, but I probably took that over with me. The problem is all your clothes stink of um, yeah. the fire. Oh, yes. like, yeah. Like it just stink, right? And because you're around the fire all the time and it's just, mate, it becomes like just overpowering like even now if i'm on, on a, at a campsite or someone's home where they they put the fire on and i get that smell i think it's survivors straight away and i can't eat coconut anymore from the amount of coconut i ate there on the island um but um but yeah i think i, I brought that in because the other jacket i had just stuck i think i chucked it in the bin i think i dumped it and i didn't have a jacket to be wow. fair yeah. Yeah. Well, you couldn't like you things. took it in your hotel room and the whole room stunk yeah. So, yeah, and I didn't think I was going back in, so I, I think I, I I punted into the bin at the hotel, and then we're like, oh, shit, I'm back on again. Yeah, yeah, what yeah. Do I do? What, yeah. Nice. What do I do? A, couple, a couple of things. There's one burning question which I want to ask you guys, but just a couple of things just in the game. Uh, on the Golden God podcast, you mentioned a fun little story about mm. how you were able to get yourself some extra biscuits when you went to the toilet. Can you, can oh, you yeah. share us this story oh, yeah. about how oh, you were able to get yeah. some biscuits? I did, I did a couple of a couple of little tricky ones. I did I did a mandarin trick that uh, that caused me to get the um, the, the stomach problems, um, and the other one was a biscuit. So when you play Survivor, mate, there is two hundred people behind the scenes, and they they'll take their watches so you can't see the time. They won't talk to you. They talk to us. The final day when we're about to go, you know, that day that we got something out of some of the camera guys because it was like the two of us left. But up until then, no talking, what have you. And and then on top of that, there's all these villagers that work behind the scenes cleaning the, the portaloo and, um, you know, doing bits and pieces that are outside of that sort of that camera crew set that you get. Um, and one of them, I went to the toilet one morning and one of the villagers that was working there, cleaning out the portaloo, mate, I, he could speak some English, so I started talking to him. And I said, um, mate, have you got any food? Can you get any food? And he said, oh, yeah, I can get food. I said, I can pay. I can pay. <laughs> I can pay. <laughs> I love it. And listen, just quietly, there was no rules when yeah. we went on there saying I couldn't mate, bribe I love it. the yeah. villagers. Right? I, I was it. never told that. So there was no disqualification at all. Yeah. Like, so it would have been different than what normal survivor is, I would have thought. Because they probably you probably can't do that, mm. but I said I'll give you fifty bucks Australian if you can just get get a bag and at the back of the portal I dug a hole. I said in here, put it there and cover it up every day. Put some biscuits there. So I go to the toilet every morning um, and go into the portal and I would have got the biscuits out of the uh, bag, take them in there, and I sit on the toilet and eat them really slowly as my <laughs> breakfast. <laughs> That's brilliant. And that's the whole thing with, as we talked with Justin a lot last week, it's yeah. it's the rules. If it doesn't say you can't do something, fucking do it. Why mate, not? I just, mate, you just, you just want, you're just doing your best. Like it's, it's not like going to war, obviously, but it's a bit like that sort of feeling like you're just, you're just going to get through the day, you know, and just yeah. do it. Hey. And like I'm used to eating, you can imagine when I was doing Iron Man and how much food I used to eat and I was still exercising every day. So I've Ooh. never not exercised. So I'd probably eat much more than most people. So when you get no food, it's a bigger shock to to someone like myself than it is to a lot of other people that probably don't eat much during the day because your metabolism isn't kicking. The other one I did too, I, I went into the jungle looking for food and it was like this, it was like this out of a dream where the sun shone down and I came out of this thick jungly area and there was just this opening and there was this fucking mandarin tree. I'm by myself with a camera guy, right? I'm like, no way. I don't even know how I got to where I was. And I'm like, fuck, there's all these mandarins. So I went and took 15 that were down low and I ate them all. I got the skin and I thought, well, shit, if someone else finds this, I'll get, I, I don't want to look like I've gone and eaten them all and, and not given to anyone else. 
So I buried the skin and the pips in the jungle and then I got my T-shirt and I grabbed more up higher that was still ripe and I wrapped them up and I took them back to camp, right? So I had about 15 there and there was, you know, three each for the, you know, the, 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 the crew that were there in the, um, the camp. And I divvied them all out and there was one extra, right, out of the three I gave everyone and I had my three. And everyone's like, you take that one, Leachy. You take the other one, mate. You found the mandarins. And like by that stage, the 15 that I've eaten, I've gone straight through my stomach <laughs> and I've just got these cramps starting in my guts where I've got to go to the toilet. So wow. I ended up going off and that was that. And, um, mate, I never found the mandarin tree again. Couldn't wow. find it. Couldn't Jeez. Find it. Wow. Yeah. It was a sign. It was that divine, yeah. the light. It was. It was, a, it was a moment. It was a so, moment. So, so anyway, so, so, yeah. Well, so like I was going to ask you about the after party because you said you woke up the next morning with a with a hangover. But like mm. Amber, we you've listened to our show. You've probably heard the story about the green turd and Dicko's toilet. Amber Amber admitted that it was her with the green turd. But Justin last week maybe thought that you might have left a giant green turd in Dicko's toilet. Do, do you have any recollection what? of that on the after party at all? Well, maybe on the toilet, did he? Yeah. So <laughs> Amber, Amber admitted to it, but then in the end, she was like, oh. Yeah, J- well. Justin was like, I don't think that was Amber. I think that was Guy. <laughs> Look, I, I, I can't say I, I wouldn't do it to him. <laughs> I couldn't say I wouldn't do it to him. But if Amber's admitted to it, well, then it must have been Amber. We'll go with Amber. I think that that's the funniest story. I don't no, know. No I feel there's picked. something more to what Guy's saying here. I don't know. Like I, just, the, the, uh... oh, I, I was um, I was putting shit on um, on Dicko a bit with his weight and everything because I I kept that theme going when um when when we finished up saying mate you're you're the first host in the history of uh, Survivor that's put on ten kilos during uh, during a month of being <laughs> of the show. So yeah, so I, I could have been me that dropped the turn because um, it would have just been. An extra part of what I was giving him, so yeah. Actually, but he can, mate, he can he can take as good as he gets. Like he's um he's quick on the tongue. So if you if you're willing to have a crack at Dicko, mate, you're gonna cop plenty back. Yeah, mate, guy. How in the game? Obviously, there were some fantastic rewards. Now you didn't get to really go on too many of them, especially because you were out of the game for that that few days. But mm. the, 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 at the end there, where you got to go to the volcano. Uh, yeah, now, cool. yeah, so ha- I mean, you've done so much in your life, you know, you're still doing so much now, but a moment like that, like, is that something you remember forever? Yeah, that was good. Like, you know, I, I saw footage that you put up of that, um, that, and it brought back instant memories, like to, to go and see that and go up in a helicopter and just see that thing bubbling. And yeah, it was, yeah, it was, it was, it was cool. Yeah. Well, it was a really, it was a really good one. And, you know, like, you know, all, all things aside with, you know, I, I have my run-ins with David Mason and, and all the rest of it, but, mate, I've got no ill feelings to him mm. and, mate, I got given some unbelievable memories from Survivor and, you know, that and that's one of them and just to be able to go in and and, and play the game, which which you know, you know what it's mm. like to play and get in there and just the, the anticipation of going in and, and the whole prepping and, and mm. all that stuff, it's just... It made, it's such a momentous just occasion, you know, and, and you know, it, yeah. So, yeah, like, mate, I, I'm thankful for the opportunity and, you know, it's just, yeah, just, you know, I mean, you, you have your run-ins, you know, I, and I get that David Mason was just trying to make, the, at the end of the day, I was just another piece of the puzzle that was, mm. he was trying to make good television um, and that was, he had that hat on, during the whole thing, um, and and I was there to win, and I didn't really care what he was doing, other than just don't get him away. You know, it, it, it's quite incredible when you really think about it. I mean, when we interviewed David Mason, I mean, he only had about six weeks or something prep to, to even yeah. get this up on the. It, it's quite incredible. Then he, you know, you're dealing with you know celebrities and people that some of the people wouldn't have necessarily you know have even done camping let alone known anything about no. Survivor. you know like kim johnson admits she'd never been camping in her life you know amber no. petty you know similar so i mean yeah. it, it really is amazing that yes he admitted there was errors you know that that looking back now he could have done differently but it really it is a credit to david mason i mean to, to think to Look, think that he actually yeah. got this made, got the show made on such minimal time and, and minimum money, minimal money. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, it is a credit to him. But you, you mentioned about opportunity. Now, 
after you won, did, was there any other further opportunities that came as a result of you being on the show and, and being the winner? Uh, look, I, I made a lot of money off the back of Survivor. Yeah, I got, you know, I, yeah, we, I, I knew that the show, once the show finished, um, it didn't start for probably, like you might know, but it, was, it might have been a month after that yeah. or something, the first ep, was it? And then... How Roughly, many episodes yeah. were there? Was there 12 there episodes? 12, 12 episodes, and I think it's sort of, you'd only been back for not, it's one of those rare ones where they kind of filmed it and it would air actually quite quickly. There's usually a bigger gap often when yeah. they film. So then, the like, era. so I had 16 weeks really before people knew that I won, right? So I had mm-hmm. four months. And so I, I basically knew that I wanted to really launch a business in health and wellness and fitness around myself. And I knew that. And, and the theory was that, um, you know, and, I, and I've done a lot of business over the years, but I, I, I knew that I never went on Survivor to do that. I never thought I was going to win, but I wanted to win and I'd prepare myself as best I could. But when I knew that I'd won, I wanted to leverage the opportunity uh, um, to launch a fitness business that could make a bunch of money, right? Because I love fitness and it's just a natural extension off the back of, you know, what I do with Ironman and all the rest of it. So I basically, um, I basically started putting contracts together with companies. I, I set up a clothing company with Big W under my name. I, I signed a deal to come up with kayaks and stand-up paddle boards and anaconda stores that I'd get royalties off all those deals. Um, I never, I, under my contract, I couldn't tell these companies that I won, but when I went in and had the meetings and cut the deals, I said, I'm going to be on television for, for three months on Channel 7, peak time. I can't tell you how I've gone, but I wouldn't be sitting here in front of you if I didn't go real good. Hmm. That was what I said. And wow. I said, here's all the things I can do and bring to the table, but you, my name's going to be up there in the press like you wouldn't believe over the next three to four months. And... Mate, we can take advantage if we do this. And I signed these deals and, um, you know, they stood for another, you know, eight, nine years until nearly six years ago, one of my best mates in a fitness class I was taking had a, had a sudden cardiac arrest and died and I had to try to bring him back to life. And, um, and I couldn't get him back. And I found out after the fact that had I had a defibrillator, um, that would could restart his heart from a shock that I literally had no chance of bringing him back. And so mate, I changed course six years ago and started a business that educates and distributes defibrillators in Australia. And it's probably now the biggest defibrillator com- company in Australia. And we, we now save a life every eight weeks or so. So, you know, it's been a journey. So to answer your questions, yeah, I, I signed a lot of deals and made a lot of money. I had a business that, just in product that had my name on it was turning over $2 million a month in, um, wow. in sales. So, you know, I, you know, I leveraged Survivor off it, but I never went on Survivor to do that. It was never my goal to, to leverage it, but I took the opportunity after the fact and just came up with a business plan that would make sense. And I wanted to be that guy that when I became 50 years of age and in a few years' time became 60, was the voice of health and wellness in this country for people around my same age. Not 20 year old, one year olds that want a bikini body, but real life um, information that would give you, you know, the best last 20 years of your life based on what I could tell you. And that all changed six years ago when my mate died. So well, it's, it's great um, work that you, you're doing yeah. with that and kind of just, it's great to sort of follow and, and everything and, and the things that you've been able to, to achieve with that. And I, I love following on social media and seeing yeah. that you're always out there. Here's a defibrillator for, for this business and this business. Yeah. And it's, it seems to be really kind of going, going right across that. You, you, know, just you know what it is? It, it's like, um, you know, we, we all sit here right now because we're passionate about what we're into and, and we've got all in common that we're passionate about survivors. So we're all sitting here doing that. And for me, my whole life has been about find the thing you love the most and do it really, really well, you know, and, and, and certainly Survivor was the one that I wanted to do in reality shows and fitness after Ironman was the thing I was most passionate about at the time. 
But then when my mate died in my hands, in my arms, and I couldn't save him, then the passion to, to see other people not die like he did and give relevance to his life for what it was became more passionate for me than, than fitness and giving people advice on, on health. So, I, so I, you know, I, I changed the course of what I, what I do. And, you know, I wake up every day feeling like I can save more people's lives and, and you know, and I, I want to educate people to, to defibrillators and why they're important and the fact that we lose 100 people every day to an electrical issue with the heart. We lose a kid under the age of 10 today. Um, you know, fit, healthy people right through to old people, so elderly. And... Um, and a defibrillator, if it's close by, um, can save 70 to 75 of those people today, would be around tomorrow if there was a defib close by. So, so that's what I do now and, and I love it and, and it, it's got meaning for me and, um, you yeah, know, I'm, I'm a lucky man doing it now. Yeah. I've got to ask the question, Guy, because you brought this up with the Golden God and it's one of these fascinating things to me that I want to learn more about because this is a real bridging moment, which helps us. What we're trying to achieve here is acknowledge the past, connect yeah. it with the future, what we've got now with Channel 10. You were called for potentially appearing on the Channel 10 version. Oh, believe it was All Stars. Yeah. What happened there? Tell us about the phone call and how close yeah. were you to being on the Channel 10 version? So, uh, so they get agencies to ring around. You know, and if you're a celebrity, they'll, they'll ask the question, like I got asked about SAS, whether you consider going on, would you like to be put forward, all the rest of it. And I got rung up by, you know, one of the agents with the network um, and they filled the question, would you go on that series um, and would you be open to competing again? And I said, what's the rules? You know, like, is there a fee? Am I going on and just competing for the prize money? How does it all work? And so I asked all the questions. Um, and when, when they were going to film, you know, and just to try to work out whether I could go and do it. Um, and they came back and said, look, we, we'd, um, was it half a million dollars in prize money for that one, yeah. wasn't it? Yep. Yeah, yeah. they said that and they said there's no fees going out for, for the show but, you know, but we, we, we want to put you forward because it's a great story. Um, and, mate, and that, that was it. And from memory they ran back and asked one more question and then it went, then it went quiet and that was, that was it. So. So, so, so to clarify, do you know if this was for... All stars, or was this for one of the champions versus contenders seasons? Uh, all stars. Which, which, and do they, when they're talking to you, are they saying, as a previous winner, this is why we want you back, or are they sort yeah. of because yeah because, that, yeah, because that's where because it, you it, want because you want Survivor, um, you know, we we we're just asking the question whether you you, you come back on. Yeah, th this is where it it makes me incredibly happy, guy. Because, because you, the bridge between the two networks. Yeah. 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 This is the thing because, and yeah. I'm going to ask you a separate question about this in just a moment about your win and the legacy of it. In us putting this show together, it is about acknowledging the history of Australian Survivor that is far more than just a Channel 10 version. It's unique in the fact that it's appeared on all three networks in Australia and that there is a very long storied history of it. It makes me thrilled that Channel 10 have contacted you and asked the question because that is the closest we've yeah. had to Channel 10 acknowledging that yeah. the show existed before they got it because yeah. this is the thing that we've talked up so much. It's why we've started, say, the Hall of Fame. It's because we fight and advocate for your season, the Channel 9 season, that you can yeah. have players from the 2002 version, your version, who would be equally as good against these Channel 10 people today. Yeah. And I'm yeah, not just cool. saying this to suck up to you, Guy, because you're sitting in front of me, but... I think you would hold your own very well on the Channel 10 I'd, version. I'd, I'd be fine. I'd be fine. I mean, the th the th obviously, you don't know how the cards are going to fall, but you go on knowing what you're in for and you're well-versed in knowing, understanding the game. And, and if you're competitive, you'll go in there and you'll go in swinging. So, yeah, it's like, yeah, spot on. Like, you know, 
And, and they're still players from the original Channel 9 season. So that's 20 years ago. That would still, like that, for one, I'll mention Shona Brown, who, who's yeah. 69 years old. She was runner-up. She was a runner-up in that first season. Mate, she, she's probably fitter than you, Guy. Like, she is unbelievable. <laughs> she's still mountain biking, yeah. hiking, gym. Yeah. She's 69. She is incredible. And, well, she, and she, she'd be great, great talent. Like, it's all about Absolutely. the characters on the show. Like, She's a great character like, too. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and like, and a character like that, you go, I would tune in and watch whether a sixty-nine-year-old yeah. that had a crack twenty years ago could still hold her own now. Yeah. Like, it's it, it's, it, it, it is, and, it, and it's it's a, it's such a shame. It, it's more than words can even mention. Like how someone like her and you haven't returned for another and season of Survivor. And that's and and, and I yeah. think just to jump in there, and that's what also makes me really happy, guy, because we've talked a lot about how. You know, as historians of Australian Survivor, to us, we can understand why Channel 10 only had Channel 10 players and All-Stars. But to yeah. us, it's more about an All-Stars would be a true All-Stars if you were on it and Shona was yeah. on it. because yeah. you, and, and it would just make it come full circle because it would just really kind of advocate for that. And it just, that makes me very happy to think that they were yeah. calling you based on you having one well, and they, it wasn't they, just you and I, man. They felt me. They felt me out. Yeah, mm. they sussed me out on it. And um, so, would you do it if they called up again and you had the opportunity, like you, everything fit into you know your yeah, life? Probably. You could do it. Yeah, mm. probably. Like I could, you know, I can hack it. I'm 57 years of age, and um, you know, I, I still train every day. You know, I'm fit. Um, you know, I'm strong mentally. So you know, like you, you as you know, with Survivor, you don't know what's going to happen. Yeah. Um, you know, and there's a lot of there's a lot of things that need to fall in place for you to get up and win. It's just it's it's really really hard to win Survivor, as we all know. It's super hard. Um, but but to go in and have another crack, mate, why wouldn't you? If you love Survivor, why, why, unless you had some sort of ailment, physical ailment, or something that you stop you from doing it. If you're a true Survivor fan, then you just go, mate. Give me, <laughs> sign me up and away we go. We I going? give this guy shit all the time on the episode yeah. as we talked out off air. But again, at the end of the day, he's played two more days of Survivor than I have will in my entire yeah. life. So. <laughs> and, and, look, hey. and, the, and the thing with it is that you'll know is that it, even though you went in for two days, it's that whole build up to get on and put your foot on the, on the beach or wherever you go to. Ah, that's all part of the whole experience, isn't it? It's just, it's amazing. All the briefings before you go on and, this thing can kill you and what's that, da, 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 and the medicals and all that stuff that you do leading in just makes oh. it all the more memorable, yeah. Now, now Guy, we, we won't hold you up too much longer, but you mentioned you still train every day, which is evident you look, you look st- extremely fit now at 57, but I'm sure, you know, you and David Oldfield still chat or, or follow each other on yeah. social media. Now, you may have seen he posted a photo. He, he's got a six-pack at the moment, like, who really? really? Yeah, he, he's he's right into his nutrition and what he puts yeah. into his body, and and he does do that. Yeah. He's older than you, and he he's got he posted this photo. He, he's he could easily play a game. I think he what he's in his sixty two yeah. now or something. Yeah, but yeah. I was just going to say I didn't know whether you you aware that how fit David Oldfield's become. He um he's probably not like aerobically as fit as what yeah. I am because I do it yeah. like, you know, we do, we do work like breath hold. Work. We will hold mm. our breath for two minutes and walk up sand dunes and do stupid stuff like that, underwater stuff, walking with, um, you know, rocks underwater on the bottom of the ocean and stuff like that. So, you know, like, you know, we, we, take, we take it to another level. But, um, but certainly, you know, if you were true about coming up with a survivor where you – Brought in past champions, but then brought back notable people that were going to give you good television. Mate, you'd sign him up as well. Yeah, hundred yeah, percent. I agree. And, and yeah, I know you guys are big fans of him. And the thing with David is that um, him and I get on good because we call it how it is. Mm. And I might, I might not agree with what he says, but I don't care because that's his opinion and that's fine. Yeah. And um, but you know, the thing with him is that because he's so polarizing and. Um, he had a natural gift of the social side of the game. Mate, he'd be a threat again if he went on. For sure he would be. Yeah, absolutely. For sure he would be. Like, you know. We're, gonna, we're just going to say we're going to look forward to having our reunion in a couple of weeks if you're both available and you're on it to kind of have you uh, there yeah, to sure. catch up with that. Guy, I've got two final questions for you. A bit of a fun one and a yeah. sort of interesting one. Mm-hmm. I believe through all the people that you have trained in your life, 
uh, lots of people you've been involved in. I, I didn't know this until I read your bio on your website. Mm. You train Madonna. Yeah. What happened here? Uh-huh. How the hell do you end up training Madonna? <laughs> it's a, it's a, yeah, it's a, um, and also back when she was like the biggest name in the world as far as entertainment went, it was back in 96 or something like that. So she was right at a peak of her, um, of her powers. And um, so a mate of mine was the US Ironman champion. And he lived in California. He came out and raced the Ironman stuff out here. And one of his best mates was a personal trainer in LA. And he happened to be Madonna's trainer over there. And so she was touring Australia and he was about to get married. So he couldn't come out for the tour. And my mate, the Ironman champion, um, knew what was going on and ran me up and said, hey, Leachy, mate, do you, and at the time I was training like Dicko and um, uh, Casey Donovan to lose weight and um, Jonathan Coleman, who's only just recently passed away. Um, so I was training people in, in that respect. I used to train Lane Beachley, the surfer. So I had a history of doing that sort of stuff. And um, he said, do you want to train Madonna? And I thought he was you know, talking it up. I said, well, what do you mean? She said, well, she needs someone to to work, work out when she's out on tour. So, mate, you want me to put you forward? I said, yeah, fine. So anyway, so I got the gig and but I, I hadn't, at that stage I'd met her and I met her, no, I hadn't met her at that stage. Anyway, I remember she was staying at Double Bay in Sydney at the, um, at the, the Ritz Carlton, as it was called back then, had the penthouse on the top floor and had the penthouse next door that was turned into a gym. That's what happens when you're that rich and famous, right? <laughs> and um, I, I got told, look, she wants to train one day running and the next day gym. Can, is that all right? I said, yeah, no problem. So I said, can you be at the Ritz-Carlton tomorrow morning? She wants to run and do a session with, with running and, and then some stretching stuff after it um, at 5 a.m. So she'll do it in the dark so then people don't recognise she wants to run the streets. I'm like, fine, done. So I rock. And I go to bed that night and I'm obviously like quite nervous about meeting Madonna, what she's going to be like. You, you have all these visions of her being just a, a nightmare, right? Nightmare celeb. So anyway, I wake up at one in the morning and I've had these dreams. I've slept through the alarm. <laughs> I had two alarms on at 4 a.m. We're caught to four to get up to get over for merely to, to double bay. So anyway, at like three in the morning, I can't sleep. I'm like, fuck it, I'll be going to drive over to Double Bay and sit out the front in the car and just wait for five o'clock to come so I don't miss the session. So at like quarter to five in the morning, I've listened to the news roll over like three times in an hour and a half. So I was like over it. So I'll go into the hotel and just wait in there for her to turn up. I get in there at 4.45 a.m. It's pitch dark outside. And mate, she's already up stretching in the foyer waiting for me to turn up. Wow. Yeah. So she was like she was like an athlete in her mindset. So she, you know, so she was just so determined. Mate, when we trained in the gym, she went hard. She just she took it all serious, and you could just tell why she was so successful because she was just single minded and and very 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 disciplined in what she wow. did. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Glad to get the fan question in there because I'm a big Madonna fan, so I just needed. To there you go. Yeah. And and look, and she was. A, Mate, I got on fine with her, good shit. You know, she was obviously like it's a different world when you got 50 people on the payroll. Yeah. That, you know, are, are cooking your food, your choreographers, your staff, your da 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 da. So she got used to getting told what she wanted to hear, probably not what she needed to hear at times. But that was, that just went with the uh, territory, I would have thought. So, yeah. The last question I wanted to ask you, and it kind of touches back onto what I was talking about the whole bridging and what we're trying to do on this show. What would you say to people out there who maybe don't acknowledge your season or, or maybe yeah. gel over it and just kind of go to Channel 10? I mean, how do you want the the legacy of your win and everything from your season to sit in the history of it? Because there are, sadly, people out there, Guy, who don't acknowledge that your season exists, sure. but you won it. So, I mean, what would you yeah. say to people who don't acknowledge your season? Look, I, I, I can't change people's opinions <clears throat> if they've got strong opinions on it. Um, and I acknowledge that, there's lots of people out there that love Survivor and, and good on you because I love it too. What I can say to you is this. From someone that's watched so many seasons Survivor 
and just loved it as a kid right through from, from when I got on it. My perception of what it was going to be like and what it was matched up completely. I starved. Mate, I just, I second-guessed at times. Mate, I, I, I did the challenges that, that were at, in Vanuatu that seemed like they were the same as the American ones. Um, when I went into tribal council, how I believed it would be watching on television, it felt like when I was there. Um, and, you know, like, yeah, you could say, oh, yeah, we were celebrities and, and it was less time being there. Um, but it felt like it was Survivor right down to the nth degree. So my, what my my dreams of being in Survivor were like and how it matched up were pretty much exactly the same. So that that's sort of my answer. Yeah. So I think it's uh, what, what I did was, was Survivor. I did Survivor. Had I gone there and it was late, or they were like, oh, listen, you're a celebrity. Here's some rice out the back to mm. you know to cover you off. Mate, I would have thought, oh, this is bullshit. This isn't really Survivor because I wanted it to be hard. Just like we said earlier, I wanted it to, to be a tough struggle because it meant that I could beat the opposition probably based on them not wanting to hang around. Um, and we got all of that. There were times when I was like, fuck, I'm starving to death here. Like I'm just, just I go, I go to bed hungry and wake up hungry every day. So those things that you would think, Sitting here now going, this is what I probably would expect Survivor to be. But I felt all of that. And yeah. that's the thing. You played it. We've always said you guys played it. You won it. Uh, the show is called Celebrities. But it's still got Survivor in it. It's still from the creators yeah. of Survivor. It's still part of the Survivor franchise. So this is where it kind of, it, it ultimately comes down to that. Guy, I, I'll say now that, uh, and I'll hand it to Matt to uh, yeah. kind of close <laughs> over because uh, he's dying here to say something. But I, I just want to say yeah, right. that... Uh, we, we've loved every second of you being on the show. We were so looking forward to, to getting you on to kind of give you this real sort of deep dive chance to, to chat about every aspect of it because as you've heard through our episodes, we, we enjoy talking about your season. It's, it's been a, a thrill ride to kind of get to this point to be able to talk to you, our first winner on this show. So it's exciting. We've loved it. Yeah, good and good. keep up the great work with everything. And we really do hope to not only get you on the reunion in a couple of episodes' time, but also to have you back on Channel 10. We, we, we now know there's an in, so well, who knows? I'll, we can bridge I'll this say, gap properly, Channel 10. I'll, I'll, <laughs> I'll say two things to you. Um, mate, I look forward to the reunion because we never had one. Yeah. Um, our season never had one. It was like an anti-climax once we left Vanuatu. It was sort of, it was sort of just done, you know, um, firstly. And secondly, mate, if they, if they give me a Guernsey to go back on, but I'll go back on and I'll go hard. Yeah. I love it. I love, well, well, Guy, I was just going to finish off. I was, I was going to give you one last chance if there was any untold stories, if you had one that you wanted to tell. But, but the fact that we know you're going to be on the reunion, if we'll give you more time save to think about reunion. it and we'll yeah. save it for the re reunion. So if you've got any stories that, yeah, I'll, there that I'll have never been, up. yeah. But, um, mate, just like Ben, mate, I just wanted to, to say, yeah, thanks for coming on. Look, you're the winner of this season, obviously, Ben and I, we, we, Spent a lot of time covering your season. We, we found out so much information. So to obviously have the, the winner of the season come on and, and tell us even more is that, you know, we're very grateful. And, um, you know, hopefully, you know, we've done something, you know, you, you won the show, but hopefully we've added to that by, you know, 15 years later going over the show and, and interviewing everyone and, and, and I guess, you know, putting light back into your season and your win. And hopefully we've added something for you by doing that. Mate, there's, there's no doubt that um, you doing what you've done has just re-engaged my thoughts of, of 15 years ago and, and I've, I've, I've actually come up with things that I'd forgotten about completely and I reckon with the reunion, even more so that'll happen where you go, oh, shit, that's right, that happened. And, you know, it's, you know like I, I suppose you guys, when you're interviewing myself and the other contestants, you know, our views on things are skewed by 15 years to a degree, you know, and you, 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 you would get, um, you know, answers that, you know, that, that, yeah, that, that play into that 15 year gap. Um, but I've got to say that you guys should pat each other on the back because you've done a, You've done a hell of a job. You're keeping the survivor, the Australian survivor flag flying. And, um, for me, you've given me a second go at, um, 
and enjoying the whole show and what I did. Yeah.